Hello developers, welcome back to the channel. This is Chris from Morales and today we're going to be taking a look at sending NFTs using Morales. You can send ERC721 tokens or ERC1155 tokens using just a single line of code with some options for both types. And I want to show you a couple of ways which we can do that. That builds into the web wallet series that I've been running over the last uh, few weeks on our channel. And so this is going to be one of those functions which will highlight today transferring NFTs. OK, so the first feature that I want to show you is to how we can display the NFTs in the application, single click one of the NFTs, choose a receiver address to send it to and an amount, and then quite literally just send the NFT by signing the transaction with MetaMask. And the other way that I'd like to show uh, would look very very similar give us an opportunity to sign the transaction and once you do that it will send that off after a couple of minutes or so once those blocks have been mined those two nfts would have been transferred using two different techniques and i want to show you how we're going to do that in this video let's jump into it now on the morales documentation sites so that's docs.morales.io if you go to the left hand side, click sending ETH tokens and NFTs, scroll down, you'll find transferring ERC721 and ERC1155 tokens. You'll find the code here for how to actually initiate these functions and, uh, and, and transfer those NFTs. It can all be done with a single line of code, but it does require some options. And the options that you need to send are very similar depending on whether it's a 721 or an 1155 token. The main difference between the two is how fungible they are. 721 token is non-fungible completely, meaning there will only ever be one of that particular NFT. Whereas 1155 tokens are semi-fungible, so you might have more than one of them. There might be a collection of 10 or 50 or 100, uh, of which you may own 10 or 15, and you want to send three or four or whatever it might be. So the, the main difference between the options of sending these two tokens is the amount that you want to send. But both of them share the same things in common. You need the type of the token. You need the receiver's address. You'll also need the contract address of where the NFT is currently stored and the token ID. OK, now these two pieces of information are part of the NFT metadata. And I'm going to show you how you can pull that information from the blockchain using some Morales functionality and automatically populate it into this function if you want to. So we'll have a look at doing this two ways. We'll use this particular code and we'll manually put in the information that we need. And we'll also automate it so we can just simply click on the NFT that we want to. Oh, I need to choose a chain. Click on the NFT that we want to transfer and it will automatically go and find that information with a single click. That's the end goal. That's what we want. OK, so the first thing let's do is just take a look at one of these NFTs. Now you can see here that there is a name and a description of the NFT that's found that from the blockchain. And you have the contract address here, which I have pulled in from the metadata and the token ID, which I have pulled in from the metadata, as long as the type, uh, uh, sorry, as well as the type. Now to find that information, let's just jump over to Visual Studio Code real quick. OK, so on the main.js file, there's a few things that I've done here. Um, first of all, I have created a couple of variables to store the URL for my login page and my dashboard. Uh, my login page uh, is actually currently hosted on like a, if you like, a subdomain, um, which is this slash wallet dash one. And then the page name is index.html and the other one is dashboard.html. So the URL will be stored as dash wallet dash one slash index.html for the login page. And I'm sure you can understand uh, what the dashboard might look like. The next thing I did is I created this immediately invoked function expression. And all that really does is redirect the user based on their logged in status. If they are logged in, then they should be on the dashboard. If they're not logged in, then they should be on the login page. And that's it. These next functions are the same as they were. The login, the logout and the fixed URL function. And then we're into the Web3 API function of transferring the NFT. And I've tried to break that down into a couple of parts because there's quite a lot that happens inside them. It's mainly about DOM manipulation and HTML. The actual core part of the code, i.e. using the Morales functionality, is only like one line of code. And then the rest of it is just what you do with the data that that one line of code gives you. So for example, uh, the get NF, uh, the get 
transfer NFTs function that I've got here. Now that runs as soon as you click on the button to uh, get the NFTs is it needs to go and get the chain first of all, which is whatever you select is this drop down. So Rinkeby, it grabs the chain. Uh, it alerts you if it's empty and tells you to choose a chain. But once it has the chain, it passes that in as an object. So the chain will be whatever you've selected in that drop down list. And it will await the moralis.web3api.account.getNFTs function. And that will return some data. And then with that data, we're going to call our second function with it. It's just to break it up, the two different parts. So that's our NFT data. And once we've got that, we don't need a Morales function anymore. We're just going to go and manipulate that data and put it on to the front end of our, uh, our application. And so we'll run a for loop. So for, and then we'll just choose each NFT as our variable. So for each NFT of NFTs.result, which was this object that we passed the function, Let's just declare a variable called metadata and we'll pass each NFT dash metadata. And we'll also let the content equal some HTML. We'll wrap that all together in this card div and we'll return it for each NFT. Okay, great. So now we've managed to pull in the data from the NFT. How do we transfer it? So if we were to go back to our documentation, let's just go to our console window as well documentation and let's go and grab one of these because I think I saw on the contract type that it's ERC 1155. So I've just copied and pasted the code from Morales and put it into the console here so we can actually initiate a transfer here. So the types already populated as ERC 1120, uh, 1155. Make sure it's lowercase. The receiver's address will come back to. The contract address we could use would just be the uh, token address. The token ID would be the token ID. And the amount, well, I only have one in my balance, so it would just be one in the balance. The receiver address, I'll just go and take one from my clipboard. It's another account that I have, and I'll just copy it in here, but you can use any other address that you want to use. What I think I might need to do is I may need to put this token ID into a string. But let's see if we get an error first of all. And if so, I think that's what the error will be. OK. All right. So got a bit of an error. I think that's the reason why. So if we just go back, I think it's because this needs to be a string. We'll just wrap that in the necessary syntax have it in the necessary syntax and you can see now as soon as you press enter it runs that code it does want them all to be in a string guys just be aware of that each one of these values need to be a string uh, and, and it wants us to confirm the transaction so it's sending from one account to another account we could just confirm that and within a few minutes it will go so that is one way that you can transfer the nfts you can just put in the stuff manually if you want to However, it will just be easier for your user if they could just simply select the NFT they want to transfer and just choose where they want to send it and off you go. Well, that's what we built with the functionality. So, for example, we if we click, uh, let's just reset this page um, and we'll go and get our NFTs back. Here we go. Uh, so if we just click on, for example, this one here, you can see that we've got a number of input fields up the top, which replicate what we did before with our previous function over here. We've got the type, we've got the receiver, we've got a contract address, token ID, and an amount. Uh, three of those pieces of information we could just get from the metadata by clicking on an NFT directly. And it will just populate that information. So the only thing you then need to do is go and get the receiver address, paste that into here, and choose the amount of the NFT that you want to send. Once you've done that, you can do the same process. Click transfer NFT. It will ask you to sign. You can confirm and then off it will go. And it takes a few minutes for that to be confirmed on the blockchain because the blocks need to be mined. But those two transfers have initiated and you'll be able to see that in your MetaMask as well. If you if you did the same thing, you've got two safe transfers here that have started 
and they will be sending through to a different address. Excellent. So the code to actually do the click is a little bit more involved. And again, you might find a different solution to doing this, but this was the way that I uh, wrote the function. Inside the get NFTs, I just had a simple timeout function because what I wanted to do is I wanted to list all of the NFTs by the class name and the code that uh, I was looking at running was just a simple So it brings us back an array, a HTML collection. It just searches for all of the cards, the NFT cards that exist on the front end. So if we just highlight one of these then, we can see in here that our data ID has our token ID there. Our data address has our contract address here and our data type has the type of token. So we pulled that from the metadata and we've just stored it inside the HTML. So if we needed it, we could use that in our front end. That's what this console log is doing here. It's providing us with all of the attributes that we stored inside the HTML earlier on. So that's the uh, the, the second index or, or one, two and three for those particular attributes. And then I go into that and I just go and collect its value. And that's the information we gave it earlier on. So we can just pull it from the HTML. So that's just one example I wanted to show you of how you could do it. There are other ways that you could do it. And I'd encourage you to go and find what they are. But with those attributes, what I'd like to then do is just whenever one of those um, NFTs is clicked, it will then populate into the HTML. So it goes and finds the uh, NFT token ID value, which is the token ID value here. And it populates it with the value we gave it in its attributes. And the same thing for the type, its value would then find the attributes value and it goes and uh, converts that to lowercase. And it does the same thing for the contract address. So that's just a simple way I found of just cycling through all of the different NFTs that are showed on the screen. And when you click it, it pu pushes the data from uh, this particular HTML collection into the uh, form here in its correct state. And then that will enable you to transfer the NFTs. Now that's it from a sort of a development side, but from a user experience side, they don't really need to see half of this information. They don't need to see the contract address. They don't need to see the token ID. They technically don't need to see the amount either. So whenever they click on one of these NFTs, they kind of don't really need to see any of that. You could hide those fields and just pop up with, uh, you know, what's the receiver address and, and off you go and send it. But I put it there just so we can see that it's updating each time we click a different one. Uh, it does show a different result. Now, future videos will take a look at things like building a portfolio tracker which will enable you to recall tokens that you've stored in the database uh, for the different assets that you might hold this is just a sort of an example of a whole different bunch of tokens and a different amount you can change all of this and the prices are pulled in automatically and it gives you a value of your holdings so you can just come back and check that easily uh, we'll look at building the the on ramper uh, into the application so you can actually buy cryptocurrency nice and easily We'll do the, the decentralized exchange or the DEX, the swapping tokens functionality we'll look at. And we'll also build in the trading view webhook alerts. So for example, if you're coding your own custom indicators and you want the alerts sent to your application, then we'll show you how you can do that as well. So these are all the sort of functions that are on the uh, to-do list to display to you guys. And then eventually I'll do a whole walkthrough of how to build this entire application from top to bottom. Do a full walkthrough as a course if that's something that you think would be interesting. Of course, if it is, let me know in the comments. Let me t uh, tell me what kind of functionality you'd also like to see. And we'll look at building that out in future videos. OK, so I'll put the code for this up on GitHub. I know some of you wanted to have more of a detailed walk through the JavaScript and how all the different functions work. If that is something that you do want, then let me know in the comments and in the Morales DAO. And we'll look at pulling together a longer course on how to break through all of the features and functions of the full wallet. Uh, but this one, if you do fork this repository, you need to have a little bit of experience with JavaScript. You are going to need to adjust these variables up the top for your specific URL subdomain. You need to know what your uh, address is for the index.html. Now, most of the time, you could probably just leave it with forward slash 
uh, index or forward slash dashboard. But if like me, you're changing the site between the different subdirectory, then you're just going to need to uh, use that as a second, a second variable, which is what I did here. Uh, but feel free to play around with that. If you get this bit wrong, then what you just might find is this function will go into an infinite cycle because it just it doesn't quite understand what it's trying to do. Uh, so you could either just delete that function or comment it out and that should fix up the issue for you. And then the only other thing that might not work if your login page or your dashboard URL is not correct is when it's trying to force you to a different window, such as uh, when you log in or when you log out it might not do that. So uh, just um, be aware of, uh, of, of making sure that your path name is correct here. Okay, great. So that has talked you through a quick overview of how to do the transfer NFTs. We looked at doing a click version of that where it just forces the information from the HTML into your uh, fields where you can then just transfer it with a single click, which is great. And we also looked at how to do it using the documentation with the functionality directly from the console. I hope that helped guys. I hope that was useful. I hope that's made you a little bit smarter with the SDK functionality from Morales. If you need any more help, let us know in the comments or in the Morales DAO and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.